it is so dangerous to walk in here in the dark with these batteries on the floor here. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another late night show here from the off grid garage in Australia. It is already fairly late tonight. I, well, I just want to say a big thank you to all your comments on the last two videos. Uh, one of them was about the battery degradation, where I presented my calculations about the calendar life degradation and also the cycle life. And especially a big thank to um, Lithium, Solar and Will Pros for leaving a comment there, sharing their opinion. I'm feeling very important now that you guys leave a comment under my videos. Thank you very much. I just want to make one thing very clear here. I don't want to talk anyone out of compressing cells. I was just sharing my opinion there and what I found. If you want to compress your cells, please go ahead with that. I won't hate you. Yeah, that's much better. It is not very long until Easter and I've got a couple of days off. I think it's about 10 days now or something. And I really want to use this time to finish up this battery. I want to put both batteries here in our battery shelf and wire everything up. Uh, I think I've got everything here to go ahead with that. Uh, I'm sure we will come across something which I haven't got here and we need to improvise a little bit. Okay, so before we start putting these batteries into the shelf here, um, I thought I'd come out to the garage late at night and check on a couple of things. All these Chinese letters. Yeah, I need to uh, uh, drill and tap all the bus bars here for our balance leads in M3. So we will have a uh, so we will have a very similar setup to these ones here, where I tapped into the aluminium bus bar, and then we connect our balance leads to this. Ah, yeah. Um, a few videos back, I asked the question which BMS I should actually use for my third battery bank, and I got a ton, a ton of comments, replies, and suggestions, and wishes. You want me to test different BMSs, everything. Uh, I still haven't made up my mind about all this. Um, it seems to be a little bit further away at the moment because we haven't installed these batteries yet. And there's so much other work to do at the moment. Yeah, guys, some of you wanted me actually to test an overkill BMS. And uh, Maddie from the Digital Mermaid actually sent me her overkill BMS. So thanks a lot, Maddie, for sending this one over. We may install this one on one of the battery banks. This was one of your suggestions as well. I'm not sure. It is a JBD BMS rebranded as Overkill Solar. I don't know what that actually means. Is it just a normal BMS? Because the Overkill seemed to be around $90 more expensive than the original JBD. But it looks pretty much the same as the JBD. So I'm not sure what kind of modifications or upgrades or configuration Overkill Solar does with the original JBDs. If you know anything, let me know in the comments down below. Here it is, guys. The, the Heltec Smart BMS does not come with any cables for B- and P-. So I got myself a couple of cables here. They are eight eight gauge wires. I think this is the same as the overkill. Yeah, this is an eight gauge as well. And I think we can use uh, three of these connectors here. So they are a meter long. And if I cut them in three equal lengths, we can solder three of these four contacts here. This should give me enough current capacity, which I need for the setup. And I also got back to Heltec here and asked them if I should screw terminal these ones here if I should solder them and they recommended to solder the cables onto the PCB. Let's see if my soldering station is actually strong enough to do that. I can crank it up to 450 degrees. Okay, let's do it right now. Let's see if it works. Okay, so this is just... We just need to strip this off here so it peeks through the PCB on the other side and we can solder it on both sides then. That is all we need. So we've got um, B- minus over here and C- minus over here. I take the black lead for the B- minus, which goes to the battery and the red one. Well, they sent the black and the red one. And the red one for the C-. And okay, let's take a sharp knife. 
do a careful cut. Don't want to cut any of the wires off. I'll use my wire stripper here to pull the insulation. Perfect. It is good. Because this is silicon super flexible cable here. I'm not even sure if I can get this one through the hole here. That looks already like a challenge. Need to go from this side here. Oh wow. Yeah guys, there's no way. I think they are rather working with probably 10 gauge wire or something. Guys, I hate this already. I don't like it. I should not have to solder these cables onto the PCB here, really. They should come ready built from the manufacturer. I hate it. Okay. Uh, so let's see if we can solder this. Well, and then we need to make sure these cables have exactly the same length because otherwise the current will not split in the same ratio and you will ending up with one cable carrying more current than the other one. Okay, <laughs> I did it. Okay, and the last one. Oh yeah, to get these cables in I have to I had to drill these holes up to five millimeters. They are only four millimeters. So 5 mm hole fits perfectly for the 8 gauge wire. So in here again, finding the same length. Well, the first two are already different length. That's a terrible job, Andy. I should have cut them before. Okay, the next one we cut, we cut before we actually solder them. So we have the same length. Because this is not going to work here. Roughly like this. <laughs> okay, I cut this one a little bit shorter because I will cut the other one again. Ah, uh, no, not with my left hand. Okay, let's see what we have done. Yep, and now we cut the middle one just a few millimeters. And now they should all have the same length. 100%. There you go. That is close enough. Do I need to solder all four of them? Or are three enough? Yeah, this is just cosmetic. Doesn't matter. Just a bit of flux. Oh, it peels off quickly. Well, okay, I must say, eventually it turned out not too bad. You're getting better with every connection you do, as with so many other things. Okay, we've got the B minus ready. I'll do the other three as well, and then I'm back. See there, five millimeter hole, four millimeter hole. I'm not sure if this is good if I drill through the PCB here. It's obviously a double layer PCB at least, maybe even a three layer PCB, I don't know. Nah, should be good. Huh? Look at this. I'm actually getting really good with this now. After six connection soldered and yeah, this one looks pretty good and yeah, they are a bit rough here the first ones are a bit rough well, that's all right so on the overkill 
BMS, the 8 gauge wire, is capable of around 55 amps. And because we've got two in parallel, this would mean 110 amps roughly for a 100 amp BMS. So this is perfectly designed. While what I have done now is I've got the 8 gauge wire as well three of them so this would mean around 160 165 amps for a 200 amp bms so i should actually connect the fourth one as well here and then it would have the right dimensions for the cables but here for my setup with 40 to 50 amp it is totally fine well if i need more amps with this bms i can still do the upgrade so, and here comes the other interesting part, basically on the other side. I've got a 35 by 8 ring lug here, which is actually a bit too small for 35 millimeter cable. So, hopefully, this will actually fit. Second one does. Oh, I need to find the right order here, otherwise. And now the challenge, the third one. Oh, wow. It fits. Look at this. Okay, let's, um, let's crimp one and see how this looks like. Okay guys, anyway, I have finalized the connections to the Heltec 200 amp BMS now. Yeah, so again, I'm not super happy that they don't supply the cables for the BMS. I left the cables a bit longer with this BMS now, because the ones from the JK BMS were really short, and I like to be more flexible with the connection cables to the BMS. And I went for the 8mm ring lug here, because it will fit our bus bar here perfectly. Remember these two pole or two stud bus bars here I made myself out of a one stud bus bar? And I used the bus bars which came with the battery cells here. See, and the ring lug actually fits perfectly onto these bus bars, maximum contact area here. And then I bought two additional of these terminals here. And look at these bus bars. They come with... This is the one I made. And this, uh, the bottom one here, is the one, yeah, you can see it even better like this. Look at this tiny bus bar it came with. I'm really tempted to make my own bus bar again and replace this one here. Because look at this. The ring terminal is actually larger than the bus bar. I don't like this. This is again such cheap... Ah. And someone recently asked under one of my videos if it is actually possible to drill and tap the standard bus bars here. And absolutely perfectly designed for that. Look at this. Just M3. Perfect. There's no problem at all to drill and tap these copper bus bars here. Okay guys, I think so far this video for tonight. It is almost midnight. I will continue <laughs> drilling and tapping these 15 connections now here. So we can actually start wiring the battery tomorrow and put it in the shelf. There was also the question why they have moved the terminals further to the corner of the battery cells. And some said, well, because of the bus bars, they will not only fit the batteries when they're standing next to each other, 
but also for the second row. But um, um, no, actually not. Unless you leave a really big gap in between the batteries, which is not a bad idea, actually. I probably do that, but we will find out tomorrow. Okay, guys, until then, you have a good night's sleep, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. And until tomorrow morning, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye bye.